The project I'm trying to work on right now is I want to take my printer, install a 0.8 millimeter nozzle, and get it to print with that 0.8 millimeter nozzle. The benefits of this is that I'll be able to print cases in like three hours instead of like 25 plus hours. The downside is this. I've been messing with this pretty much all day, so this is kind of tomorrow's project at this point. But I think what I need to change is I just need to raise my build plate temperature to prevent that little warp in there. And then I just have to lower my nozzle temperature because I think it's a little bit too high. I should also mention that I am printing this on my way, way, way old Ender 3. It doesn't have a dual Z, it doesn't have a filament dryer, it's not calibrated as well as my other ones, so I'm not really like giving it too well of a fighting chance to actually like work. But right now it seems to be doing good, so we'll see what happens. I don't know if you can tell or not, but that layer shifted and it's done this like three times now trying to print this and I don't know why. I think something's not right with the extruder end, but I have no idea. What I'm gonna do before I actually head to bed is I'm gonna start another print and see if that prints overnight. Maybe I'll wake up to spaghetti, maybe I won't. It's been a few days since I last checked in on this video and this right here is the last print you saw me do. And you can see that it actually did complete, but it warped pretty heavily. I've been pretty much spending the last couple days doing a lot of test prints and most of them are failing. And a lot of them were still having that layer shift issue. So what I ended up doing is tomorrow I get a dual Z kit for this printer because what's ending up happening is the Z axis is actually binding somehow and I'd rather just throw a dual Z on it and that shouldn't happen anymore like my other two printers. I think we're getting really close to being able to print a case because I did end up printing this on it which somehow actually did succeed in printing. Where I'm kind of at now is I'm printing another Benchy with a new fan shroud that I installed and hopefully tomorrow with the dual Z I'll be able to actually start printing a real case. My little Benchy actually worked has some issues with overhangs, but other than that, the sides and stuff look good. So I decided I'll actually give this a go and see if the case prints, even though it doesn't have the dual Z. So I think this will probably work this time. Came back down here to check on this because I looked at my camera that I have hooked up to these and it layer shifted again. So I'm pretty sure what's happening now is it's gonna be solved tomorrow with the dual Z. But what's happening is as it hits the extremes of the bed, it's sagging the x-axis i think which i could probably mess with the eccentric nut to like actually move that a little bit but the dual z will solve it anyway what really sucks though is that everything else seems to be like tuned in perfectly like i mean look at that first layer it's just that layer shifting is just absolutely horrible it's currently the day that the dual z is supposed to get here but what i ended up doing is i decided if i'm going to be upgrading it i might as well go all out and print it a 50 15 fan shroud. So I'm going to get this installed and then once the dual Z gets here I can put that on and this printer should be like a lot better than my other two at this point because it'll be like fully upgraded. There is actually a reason why I'm upgrading this cooler other than just I want to and that's basically because when you're dealing with layers this thick there's a lot of heat stored in them and the stock cooler just can't cool them fast enough and from all my research that's what led to warping. So by cooling the layers down faster, it prevents the warping because they're not storing all that heat and trying to contract. But with that said, I don't see any reason to not add this to my other printers because it will actually help with bridging performance too. And if I ever want to put a bigger nozzle on them, they'll be ready to go. Not to mention, I also do think it looks cooler than the stock fan. It just kind of looks more futuristic, I guess. Finished installing the new fan and the dual Z. I didn't record too much of it because it was really just a lot of tedious stuff. But right now, it is printing, and I'm gonna have to just wait a little while to see if this actually completes, but I think it should hopefully work now. I'm trying the exact same file I tried last night in gold, so if all goes to plan, this will actually print the case. That print you saw me just start, well, it layer shifted yet again. And at this point, this was all last night, I decided that I pretty much need to just watch this and see what exactly is happening, because up until now, it's been mostly guesses. So what I did is I sat there for 45 minutes and just watched it until I started hearing a scraping noise. And then all of a sudden it happened where I saw it actually bounce and layer shift the entire print. And that's when I realized that it wasn't the Z axis, it wasn't the X axis, it wasn't even the plate not being leveled properly. 
it was that the layers were actually colliding on itself and the nozzle scraping against the bed was causing it to shift. Now this leads me into something I want to talk about with the 0.8 millimeter nozzle that's actually kind of a good thing but also a negative. These layers are 0.8 millimeters thick. They're also 0.8 millimeters wide. In turn, they're very strong layers, meaning that the print is going to be very strong. But that means if a layer happens to be a little bit higher, a single line happens to be a little bit higher than 0.8 and the nozzle collides with it, because it's so strong, there's not enough heat in that nozzle to just burn through as if it was like a 0.4 millimeter layer. Like if I was using a 0.4 millimeter nozzle, those layers would only be 0.2 or 0.3. That's what the discrepancy would be between them. But with a 0.8, it could be like a millimeter thick in certain areas, depending on how inaccurate the filament going in was. And that is causing it to basically collide with itself and then knock the x-axis off. There's basically a very simple solution to this inside of Cura that I didn't want to use until I realized I'm going to pretty much have to use it. And the reason you avoid this typically is that it can create blobs on your parts if your other settings aren't tuned right. But it's called Z-Hop. Basically, as the extruder moves across the bed, it's going to just jump in the Z-axis so that it avoids colliding with itself. I enable that, and then within about four hours later, I had this. I had my first 0.8 millimeter nozzle, 3D printed case. You can see those layers are just absolutely massive there. And it worked. So no warping, nothing weird with it. It came out pretty good. And because they're 0.8 millimeter layers thick, this actually is like super strong because they're basically massive layers. I mean, this right here weighs 150 grams, right? My solid case is in the same exact one weigh about 200 grams. But this thing printed in four hours, and it's solid. So I finally did it, I guess. I don't really know exactly what the point of this video was other than I wanted to basically make cases in like four hours. I pushed my printer to pretty much the limit, and I'm able to print cases in four hours now. I don't know if I'm going to actually be using these cases too much on builds. I think they look nice. Like the layers don't really look like layers. It kind of looks like it was intentional to have those stacked lines there but i still think that i like my 0.2 millimeter layer height cases a little bit better they don't feel more solid actually the 0.8 ones feel more solid somehow even though they have infill with that said i am going to be doing an entire build video on this board next week it is called the scott along it's going to use a 7u space bar i think a lot of people find it interesting so if you're not already subscribed do subscribe and if you don't have notifications enabled do enable notifications so you don't miss that video i do a lot of videos on keyboards and stuff like that i have a lot of videos planned for the future specifically on qmk and tiny keyboards and 3d printing stuff and a lot of hand wiring videos i have some coming out there that i think a lot of you will really find interesting i hope someone got some use out of this video and enjoyed it and i'll see you next time